What a beautiful fall day here in Durham, North Carolina. O'Kelly Riddick Stadium on the campus of North Carolina Central. The 90th renewal of the rivalry between the Eagles of North Carolina Central and the Aggies of North Carolina A&T State. ESPN College Football, of course, presented to you by McDonald's. Let's take a look at the MEAC standings to get a better understanding of what's at stake this afternoon. North Carolina A&T at 5-1 in conference play. They need to just win, baby. If they do that, they assure a co-championship in the MEAC. Also, a spot in the postseason, either the Celebration Bowl or the FCS playoffs. For Central, could be a big feather in the cap of their interim coach, Granville Eastman, if they get a victory today. And, of course, they'd play spoilers against their arch rivals. Along with Forrest Connolly, the former national championship offensive lineman, I'm Eric Clemens, thanking you for being part of a college football Saturday with us on the ESPN family of networks. Talk about the rivalry. When you talk about A&T State, you talk about defense. They're ranked in the top ten every year for the last several years, it seems like. Central has to figure out a way to solve that defense on the ground, and they do it with a talented running back, Isaiah Totten. Well, what Totten brings to the table is the ability to carry the ball and be the bell cow. 36 carries last week, 190 yards rushing. That is the output, and that is what they need this afternoon to keep that A&T defense on the field. I think that is their best shot to win this ball. As A&T defense, we talked about it under Coach Sam Washington as a coordinator, now the head coach, has been amongst the best for several years running. What do you like about them, and why is it so difficult to move the ball on the ground against these guys? Well, they're uber aggressive. They come up the field. There's no read and react. It's straight up react. They come up the field. 42 and a half tackles for loss by that four down defensive line. I love the aggressiveness of this defense, and I think for Central, you have to play against that aggression and use that aggression against them. It'll be interesting to see when the rubber meets the concrete in this ball game. We are here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium on the campus of North Carolina Central. A&T won the opening toss, elected to defer, and Noel Ruiz will be kicking it back deep. And we are underway. Short kick. This is Kennedy with a nice opening. Gets it out across the 25-yard line to the 26-yard line where Central will take over first down and 10. They are without their star quarterback. The game was just coming to him when he hurt a foot a couple weeks ago. Chauncey Caldwell, so starting in his place, Nail Ramadan, who's more of a pocket passer, less of a threat as a runner, number 16, and he's going to lead this offense against one of the stingiest, nastiest defenses in all of FCS football, especially against the run. And it'll be interesting to see what happens on this first play. I think that'll kind of give us an idea of the type of offense they want to run this afternoon. Quick screen pass will get the ball up to just over the 30-yard line, a pickup of about four on first down, and these rivals already some extra pushing and shoving after the first down play. And these are the type of plays that I expect to see Central run all afternoon. Quick passing, quick twitch plays. You want to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands, get it into your playmaker's hands, allow them to make a play in the open field. That'll be second and six. That was Nike Martin, the favorite target of Central quarterback so far this year. Came in with a team high 30 receptions on that quick screen. Here's Ramadan, running out of time, and now just throws that one away on the far side out of bounds. And that was a good job by the offensive line to recognize the blitz coming. They had a good blitz pickup. I thought Ramadan had a little bit more time. He bailed on that play a little bit prematurely. They had the pocket around him. All he had to do was climb up the pocket. I think he would have been able to get a little bit more time and find a receiver down the field. But when you're playing in such an aggressive defense, guys tend to get rid of the ball quickly because they know someone is coming from somewhere. Third and six. Ramadan, quick hitter. Near side. Totten making some moves. Totten getting close to first down yardage. It'll depend on the spot. It looks like they'll spot him about a yard short as he picked up five, and the punt team's going to come on for the Eagles of North Carolina Central. And I thought Totten could have cut that back to the middle of the field, and he would have gotten the first down. But once again, it's the vision. Good job by the a and defense to pursue the football and get the ball carrier down short of the sticks. John Picaro 
has a long of 55 yards so far this year. He's going to punt it away. And he's going to put it away to Zachary Leslie. Leslie coming up the field and fumbled it, muffed it, and it goes out of bounds. It'll remain North Carolina a and football at the 36-yard line, and they dodge a bullet that time. And I'm surprised he didn't make the fire call. Usually when your guys are coming back and the ball is hanging in the air, the receiver usually makes a fire call, and everyone runs away from the football. He should have made that fire call. His teammate did not know the ball was coming down that close. Only a 28-yard punt, so the Aggies of North Carolina a and pretty good field position to start it off, and their quarterback is Lamar Reynard, who missed last weekend's game with a concussion. He passed the protocol earlier this week and practiced twice, so their starting quarterback is back in action. And this is Mark Well Cartwright. Cartwright pulling away from tackles, getting up close to the 45-yard line. And you see what they did with the misdirection. They've got the jet sweep action coming, so the linebackers have to react to that. And when you've got the linebackers reacting, you've got Cartwright coming downhill. You're destined to get positive yards. Cartwright picked up eight on that play. It'll be second and short. Coach Sam Washington so glad to have Reynard back in the starting lineup. 33-2 and two as a starter. Going for it all. Bell had it knocked away at the last minute. He was looking for Elijah Bell, but Demario Evans was there to knock it away at the last second. And that's a good job by Evans waiting till the football got to the receiver and then making the play on it. Too often guys act prematurely. He high-pointed the football, got his hand in there, and was going down with the receiver to make sure he was able to strip the football. We were talking about Bell before we went on the air. He's an Anquan Bolden type. He's been the man here at wide receiver, but battled a lot of injuries so far this year, finally starting to round into shape, and they really can use him if they go postseason from here on out. Well, he's one of those square chin types. You know, not flashy, but he'll run over you, run through you, and at times he will run by you. And a second effort. I don't know where they'll spot it. He'll be short. Of the first down as he got stacked up, did Markwell Cartwright. And he'll be at least a yard short. And that was a good job by the central middle linebackers coming downhill. When you're facing a 4-2-5 defense like Central employs, you've got a lot of speed on the field. You don't have as much size as you do in a traditional 4-3 defense. But with the 4-2-5, you've got guys that can hit the gap. And you saw the ability to hit those gaps and not allow the back to get that one yard and get the first down. Michael Rivers averaging 39 yards per punt will strike his first in the afternoon. We have a little movement along the offensive line. And a false start that time going against Marquise Blue on the special teams, number 57. And if you don't think this game is important, did you see the reaction? from the central sideline when those guys jumped off sides. <laughs> that lets you know how important this game is to these young men. Back deep to receive is E.J. Hicks, who's standing at his own 20. Rivers should strike this from his 35, and he does. Nice high punt. Yielded at the 10 and surrounded by white shirts that time is E.J. Hicks. And North Carolina Central will take over inside their own 10-yard line. We are scoreless in this Aggie Eagle Classic 2018. Get DirecTV and catch college football games anywhere with the DirecTV app. More for your thing. That's our thing. Visit DirecTV.com. We are back in Durham, North Carolina. No score. Both teams failing to convert on third and shorts in their opening possessions. So defense is controlling at least on the first couple possessions and Nail Ramadan leading his offense out for the second time in the contest. They'll be first and 10 starting from their own 10 yard line against this North Carolina a and State defense. And Ramadan gives it to Isaiah Totten who is stacked up quickly after getting maybe one and a host of white shirts there led by that talented defensive end, Daryl Johnston, 
We'll be talking about him. He has 16 and a half tackles for loss, ranking in the top 10 in FCS. He does a good job of using his arm with getting separation from the offensive tackles and disengaging. That's one of the things the pro scouts will look at when they study film. They'll also want to see if he can play standing up as an outside linebacker. Bell Scouts are already talking about him, scheduled to be in the draft class of 2020. Little slant pattern, thrown a little behind his receiver, but reaching back for the catch and first down yardage for 10 yards is Tyler Barnes, number 81, a true freshman wide receiver. And one of the things that I noticed about this AMT defense, as good as they are, if you can block them up front, the receivers can beat their defensive backs on the outside if they don't get a bump in that press man coverage. Another quick hitter to the near side. This is complete and before he's being surrounded by White Church, Josh McCoy makes that catch and run and a good gain on first down again. And these are the matchups that you look for if you're central. You want to get your bigger tight ends on some of those smaller defensive backs. And this has been quite a rivalry lately over the past several years. Central has really upset the apple cart of North Carolina A&T. If you had a glance at some of the scores, finally A&T last year, after a pregame scuffle, won that one. That was close to a lateral here, Forrest. Well, you see right here, he throws it forward. I'll tell you what, it was very, very close, but the officials blew the whistle early to let everyone know that that was an incomplete pass. But Central has to be careful when you're passing that football. You don't want that to be a lateral. And key third down play, third and manageable at third and three. And we see the recipe for Central right now, the quick passing game. Get rid of the football fast. Don't allow that defensive line to affect what you want to do. Oh, Ramadan, boy, that one was undercut in the defensive secondary by Deion Jones, and Jones almost had himself a pick six. Now, if you're the central coaching staff, remember that play, because if they go with a double move and he jumps that route again, you'll have a receiver streaking down the field. But a good job by Jones to react to that football and watch the quarterback size. Ramadan has to do a better job of not eyeballing his receivers pre-snap, because if he does, Deion Jones and one of these other defenders, the man T will get a big play. And this punt is going to be rolling dead at about the 35-yard line. So once again, good field position for North Carolina a &T. They'll take over when we come back. Monday Night Football, Chiefs, Rams. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. The Aggie Eagle Classic continuing first quarter action. We are scoreless along with Forrest Connolly. I'm Eric Clemens here in Durham, North Carolina. Of course, everything on the line for the Aggies of A&T. They need a win to get at least a share of the 2018 MEAC Championship and a possible appearance in the Celebration Bowl, depending on what FAMU does in that Florida Classic against BCU. Here's a quick swing out to the near side, a little bit high for Markwell Cartwright. Are they calling it a lateral? No. They finally signal incomplete. And, and Cartwright taken down and given a little extra stuff there by Jaquel Taylor. And uh, they separate before anything escalates. And this is what you expect in the rivalry ball game. A game with so much at stake for both ball clubs. For Central, their coach wants to get the job. <laughs> And for A&T, they want to go to the playoffs or either play in the Celebration Bowl. And a lot of these young men played high school football together, so they know one another. It's a year of bragging rights. So I expect what we see with the hostility on the field. Lamar Reynard has many school records in his pocket. Looking to add a victory to that 33-2 record as a starter. Coming in here on second and ten. And the give, and that is Cartwright bouncing off tackles. And he is met by a lot of black shirts after picking up maybe three. So it'll be a third and long. And one of the things that the A&T offensive linemen need to do a better job of is staying low, playing with the flat back. 
Too many guys are standing up trying to use just their upper body strength. You have to use your lower body strength and get beneath some of these defensive linemen for Central to get pushed. You cannot get pushed playing high. And correction, that was Jamaine Martin who came on to spell Cartwright running up the middle for three, and he goes off, and Cartwright comes back on on third and seven. Raynard throwing as his man Bell, and Bell is across the 45 to the 48 yard line. First down yardage before he's brought down by Demario F. And a great job by Raynard standing tall in the pocket and delivering the strike down the field. You see his receiver, he sees the coverage, he sits down, makes himself a big target for his quarterback. That's what you have to do if you're Bell. Make yourself a big target. Give your quarterback some to go with the football. Elijah Bell just short of a thousand yards receiving last year and you know everybody to a man all the coaches and the kid is just a beast but battled a lot of lower body injuries this season and is finally rounding into shape the blitz is on Raynard throwing floating it down the middle has a man inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line is Malik Wilson and that was a great job by the right tackle, Briante Matthews. He saw the blitz coming. He picked it up. And I tell you what, that linebacker, he's going to make sure he stays a little bit lower when he comes in on that blitz package again because Matthews stabbed him in the chest and did a good job on the outside, giving the quarterback the time he needed. Give him 33 yards on that game. Wilson, the fastest wide receiver. And here is a big hole off the near side. And that was Jamey Martin once again. And Martin gets... Right down inside the five-yard line, a big gain on first down that time as well. And a good job by the left guard, number 78, Micah Shaw, to get up the field. He found some work. That's what you got to do, big fella. When you get up in that gap, find you some work. He found some work and opened up a lane for his back to get up the field. From one old lineman to another, right? Absolutely. Hold him up. Hold him up. Absolutely. <laughs> You gotta find, you're gonna take all that time and, and use all that energy to get there. You gotta find some work when you get there. <laughs> so, Jamaine Martin, a big pickup of 15 on first down, first and goal now for the Aggies. Raynard, floater in the end zone. Bell, did he have it? Yes, he did. Touchdown. He was covered well in the near corner by Marcus Martin, but somehow got control. And you saw great body control by Bill. He turned around, located the football, got a little bit of a push off, but both guys are out there battling. He's being held, but he's able to get the ball, and this is going to be a question now. Let's see if he got a foot down. He gets possession right there. I think that left foot may be down. Possession right there. Left foot. Oh. That's going to be That's going to be awfully close. And... I guess they are not replaying it, so the extra point is up and good. And Ruiz converts. And North Carolina A&T marches smartly down the field to take the lead. 7-0 in this game on a nice catch and nice control by Elijah Bell. So a &T completes an impressive six-play, 65-yard march in two minutes, 34 seconds to go up 7-0. Bell, a four-yard, nice body control TD catch. And now Noel Ruiz is going to be kicking off to Demario Evans, one of the deep men back there, at, as well as Chance Kennedy. And this is going to come down at the eight yard line. And being brought out short of the 20 where a host of white shirts bring him down. What a game it should be between two of the NFL's top teams in Los Angeles. Our week 11 Monday night football matchup has Patrick Mahomes and the nine and one Chiefs taking on Todd Gurley and the nine and one Rams. 8:15 15 Eastern, 5 15 Pacific on ESPN. Also simulcast in Spanish on ESPN News and of course on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. North Carolina Central now out at the 18-yard line on first and 10. Ram Don running out of time, trying to buy more and throws that one away. 
to save his life as he is brought down hard and now he is down on the ground for a little while and bent over in pain as he was brought down hard by Justin Cates big defensive tackle the 6'2", 261 senior who has three and a half sacks but Ramdan toughens up he's going to stay in the game and that's what this defensive line will do to you. They will bring pressure, pressure, pressure constantly. I think for Central, you've got to sprint Ramadan outside of the pocket on some of these plays to give him more time to be able to look down the field. Sam Washington, of course, with a big hand in building this defense into one of the nation's best over the past several years, as you see, with that step of the run for no gain. And on that play, when Ramadan handed off the football, number 96, Sam Blue was back there with him to almost take the hand off from him. So the offensive line has got to do a better job of getting initial contact. Don't allow these defensive linemen to get all the way up the field right off the snap of the football. You've got to get some type of contact to allow the back to find and see a lane to get through it. Central so far 0 for 2 on third down. This is third and long. Ramadan under pressure and almost lost that when he is brought down and brought down hard by Sam Blue, the big defensive end. And on that play, the offensive tackle did the biggest mistake that you can make as an offensive tackle. He opened up that outside shoulder. You've got to get three kick steps back. You see the outside shoulder turned out, so he had no way to react and kick step to the inside. You've got a power step when the defensive lineman makes it move to the inside. But what he did was he opened up that outside shoulder, gave up a short corner, which allowed the defensive end to get to the quarterback. John Picaro will strike this one from about his two. Zachary Leslie standing at midfield, and this is a high punt. It will land very short, and that'll go out of bounds. And that one didn't have much distance on it at all, so the Aggies will take over in great shape at the North Carolina Central 35-yard line. A 24-yard punt, of course, went out of bounds, no return. So let's see if a and State can take advantage of this great field position, and good defense really helped set all that up. Absolutely. They got pressure on every play in that series, whether it was pressuring the quarterback, flushing him outside of the pocket, getting on top of the back as soon as he had the ball handed off to him. That is exactly what you want to do and making getting the sack on the last play and almost causing the fumble and getting the ball back for their offense inside the five-yard line. Granville Eastman needs his defense to come up big here. Lamar Reynard on first down gives it to Mark. Well, Cartwright, big hole, and Cartwright will not be caught. Touchdown. A&T. And Markel Hardy, number 68, has a key block on this play. And when you have openings like that, and you've got a downhill back like Cartwright, where he can hit the hole and go. If we even am leaving it, you see him run away from all of the defenders. A good job by that offensive lineman covering up those defensive linemen and getting up to the second level to those linebackers, not allowing them to flow downhill and get to the ball carry. See number 81. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. This is number 81's first unsportsmanlike conduct of the game was disqualification. So Ron Hunt. A little excessive celebration after that 35-yard touchdown run. And the extra point by Ruiz is up and good and make it a 14-0 game, and that penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And, you know, I'm not a fan of giving guys those penalties when they're just talking. It is an emotional game. These are young men that played high school football together. This is a big time rivalry. There's a lot at stake for both ball clubs. They're just enjoying the game. Now, when you got when people are throwing punches and whatnot, then okay. Or if you're standing over somebody, but just talking, I don't like that. I, wow. I mean, he's not running uh, up did, in another player's they, face from the other post. Did they the get him team. for giving five to a fan in the stands at the touchdown? Wow. Wow. They're playing okay. to the crowd. I mean, I, I, I don't like that penalty. I think you got to let the kids enjoy scoring a touchdown. 
Lightning strikes one play 35 yards on the Cartwright run took only eight seconds and A&T with 515 to go in the first quarter. Dare I say it already in control right now especially with that great defense they have. Let's see Central should get pretty good field position following this Ruiz kickoff low line drive it might go out of bounds it will so that ball is going to be brought up to the 40 and that will be good field position the best of the day so far for Central and let's see if they can respond now if I'm Central you can't hold your head down this is the first quarter they've got two quick scores he spotted the 50 yard line first down oh, it'll, okay it was announced it'll be spotted at the 50 I guess probably because of that penalty. because of the penalty but I think if you're, you're right now, if you're central, you've just got to buckle down. You've got to give with that running offense. I think you need to beat up on this defense a little bit. Talk to your offensive linemen and make them understand we've got to run the football. We've got to get established with Totten. We've got to get him going. We know he can carry the load. 36 carries last week, 190 yards, 5.3 average. He can carry the load. They've got to get him going. First down, this is Totten trying to find some room off the right side and doesn't find much. Host of white shirts bring him down after a gain of only one. And to get Totten going, I think you need to go downhill. I don't like the east to west running attack when you've got an aggressive defense like this because they flow to the football. I think you've got to get quick hits. So I think dive plays, you know, in between the guards, that is where I think they're susceptible. You've got to get these guys going upfield because if you go side to side, now you've got this pursuit defense coming downhill. delay and nothing doing that time back there being first back there was number 99 Artavius Richardson they like to rotate a lot of defensive linemen along this A&T front seven that's a loss of two so once again Central looking at a third and long for Nail Ramadan their backup quarterback and I think they put themselves in a bad position first of all going east to west now with that delay against an aggressive defense you've got to be as aggressive with your play calling being a north and south ball play. And 11, Ramadan blitz is on, good protection, going deep down the sideline, and almost a falling catch as battling for position along the far side for that football was Deshaun Stevens. And everything was perfect on this play. Good. A good route by the receiver. You see him slip at the end, but the offensive line did a good job giving Ramadan the time. He stood tall in the pocket. He knew where he wanted to go with the football. The receiver just lost his footing at the end of that throw. If he doesn't lose his footing, I think he catches that football for a first down. And that rugby style punt is another short one, but gets a great roll. And it's going to roll dead at about the 10 yard line. Well, make it the nine. This is still rolling as a t State will take over. Now you can stream college football all season long on ESPN Plus, so start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. 42 yards on that punt. No return, and a t State in control as 340 remains in the opening quarter of this Aggie Eagle Classic here in Durham, North Carolina, on the campus of North Carolina Central University. A&T, of course, needing a victory to assure at least a cold MEAC championship. If FAMU wins, though, FAMU gets to go to the Celebration Bowl. A&T will go ahead onto the FCS playoffs and first down a run play that time. That time, Jamie Martin doesn't get much. In fact, he lost one. And I think a &T will be careful right now. They're deep in their own territory. You don't want to get up a short field with the turnover. I think they'll run the ball three times. If they can get a first down, then maybe they'll open that offense back up. I don't expect to see them passing the ball right now because of how deep they are in their own territory. Right now you see that Florida A&M score the Rattlers up 3-0 in the first quarter against Bethune-Cookman. Raynard gets Bell on the near side. Bell trying to fight for some more yardage. And Bell is surrounded by a host of black shirts and brought down well after a whistle. Daryl Smith, one of those 
who was wrestling with the burly wide receiver there, used to be a basketball player, was recruited by Division I basketball programs, but slipped through the cracks and wound up here as a wide receiver, and they believe he can do it all when healthy. And I'm surprised they passed the football because their quarterback was in the end zone when he let that ball go. That was a dangerous play. It ended up being a positive play for them. They've got two or three yards out of it, but I just don't know if I'd take a chance being this deep in my own territory. This is third and eight. Trips to the far side. Reynard looking, throwing far side, and that one almost a one-handed catch on the far side of the field, but we do have a flag on the play as he looked for Malik Wilson. And he was covered by Mike Robinson. Now let's see how they sort out the flag here. Prior to the pass, holding, defense, number 17. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. He said Mike Robinson grabbed a little bit of the intended receiver, Malik Wilson. And that is holding, so the drive stays alive with the automatic first down. If you ever needed a spark, if you ever needed something to happen now, if you're the home team, if you're central, try to get yourself emotionally back in this game. They need a big play here on this series by their defense and create something. Reynard off the play fake, stepping up, going deep down the far side and threw it a little behind Wilson, his intended receiver, who was again well covered by Mike Robinson. And there were a lot of moving parts on that play. They had the jet sweep action going. And what Reynard did, I thought he released the ball a little bit prematurely. He had a lot of pressure around him. He possibly could have stepped up in the pocket, which I think would have allowed the receiver to get a little bit more separation down the field. Again, Wilson, uh, the fastest of the wide receivers. They call him the field stretcher. Uh, 29 catches, one of four A&T receivers with over 20 catches so far this year. So Reynard and company like to spread it around in the passing game. Oh, here's Cartwright busting out of the pile. Cartwright running over defenders out across the 35-yard line. Has a little more to say to the defender, Marcus Martin, whom he ran over. What do they call that, a truck? i tell you what, Marcus Martin just got the people's elbow put on him. I want you to watch Cartwright on this play. You see me bounces it to the outside, and here you go, Martin. You come and step in the boom. I'm going to run it over and keep going. That's what you love to see as an offensive lineman from your running back because it makes you want to go out and knock somebody out at the second and third level of the defense. And that's a pickup of 15 by Markwell Cartwright, who came into this game needing 108 yards to get 1,000. And if he gets 1,000 yards rushing, he'd be one of the few backs in school history to have 1,000 yards in back-to-back -back seasons. Timeout on the field as they're going to talk it over, A&T State. And Cartwright, look, look at his finish again. That's why you've got to have a, have a wide base, ladies and gentlemen, and you've got to have your form correct. When you've got a downhill back like Cartwright coming at full speed, you can't just stick your arm out there and think you're going to bring him down. What'd you call it, my friend? The people's, the people's elbow. People's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And there's the rush yards, A&T State. A distinct advantage, 76 yards rushing already. We're not even out of the first quarter yet. Central. Minus seven right now. So after the uh, timeout, ANT uses its first. Central still has a full complement here in the half. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 36. And there's Cartwright again, another nice hole off left guard. And Cartwright gets up close to the 40. And you can see it getting chippy out here, especially for this central defense. They've given up 14 points in this first quarter. So, you know, these guys are feeling a little bit, you know, touched right now. And they know they've got to stand up. They've got to get a stop right here. Last year, these two teams, uh, we were there here at ESPN, a little pregame scuffle, a little fight. Got Devontae Reynolds thrown out before we even kicked it off. Blitz on, throwing it on the near side, and there is Bell who held on to it. Yeah, they call it a catch. And he's got those strong arms. Demario Evans could not rip it out of there. 
And Bell has another catch on the near side, and it's another first down for AT. And a great blitz pickup by number 30, Jermaine Martin, to pick up the blitzing cornerback. If he doesn't pick that up, the quarterback, Raynard, is not able to deliver the ball down the field. Good recognition by the back to pick up that blitz. Here's Elijah Bell. We talked about that body type. And Anquan Bolden, strong receiver type. They love him here at North Carolina A&T State. And here's Raynard. Quick bubble screen and some good movement and action with the blocking scheme on that play. And he gets another first down depending on the spot at the 36-yard line. Malik Wilson on the reception. And that'll do it for the end of the first quarter after that 12-yard game. Right now, the Aggies of North Carolina A&T State are in total control. It's 14-0 after one. Monday Night Football, Chiefs Rams. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. Talk about most of these players knowing each other, growing up together, playing with and against each other. Only 54 miles separating these two schools, Greensboro and right here in Durham. Of course, the a and side is packed full because there's no real problem making that one-hour drive from Greensboro over here to Durham. And so far, the a and State fans quite happy with their Aggies right now as we start the second quarter with a and up 14-0 in the Aggie Eagle Classic here against North Carolina Central. Raynard. Stepping up in the pocket, going for it all, and he overshot his intended receiver as Malik Wilson was running on a post, a deep post, and covered by Anthony Sherrill. That was a good job by number 98, Miles Turner, to put pressure on Raynard, not allow him to step up in the pocket. He got pressure right in his face, not from the outside, but right in his face, so the guards in the center have to do a better job of being stout at the point of attack in absorbing those guys coming with the bull rush. Now all kinds of flags down as we get a late substitution, substitution. in the illegal. 12 men in the formation. Five yard penalty. Second down. The illegal substitution against A&T. First quarter A&T, 154 total yards to only 19 for Central in that first quarter. Sam Washington, first year head coach. Of course, longtime assistant at both Grambling and here under the legendary coach Rod Broadway, part of that unbeaten season last year. Raynard with three receivers split to the near side, left, and he comes near side. He has his man Bell, and that has been open all afternoon. Bell curling that pattern and cutting it off a little bit short and getting open. Well, what a t is doing, they're spreading them out going four wides. So they've got guys all over the field, and Raynard has all the time in the world because Central is only rushing four. I think Central has to commit some of their linebackers to that pass rush, bring pressure, do not allow Raynard to sit back and pick you apart because right now he's very comfortable in the backfield. Trips this time to the far side right for Raynard. And on third down. Deep out pattern, and that one knocked away and broken up incomplete. And, and that was a good job by the central defense. They kept everything in front of them. Raynard initially wanted to go with the underneath crossing, but the linebackers did a good job of pressing upon those receivers coming across the formation. And a good job by the defensive back to wait until the football got there to go and make a play on it. That's exactly what the doctor ordered on defense for the central ball club. Now, let's see if they can get some good field position on this punt and try and get some movement with the football offensively. An intended receiver on that deep pass down the far side was Isaiah Hicklin. And now in punt formation, Michael Rivers. And we have a whistle and a flag. It'll be a delay of game. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. They'll push him back five and at least presumably give Rivers a better angle. To try to cough and corner this one. And back deep to receive, standing at his own 10, is E.J. Hicks. Rivers, back to kick for the A. 
Rivers with the coffin corner effort. And what a punt it is. And wow, I believe a teammate actually knocked it away from a defender down there who was going to down it at the one. But a teammate knocked it away from him. 34-yard run is a touchback. And that's an example of a teammate not wanting your teammate to get the play. If you're trying to make the play, you got to just let it go and let your guy make the play. We built one of them with an available smart trunk. You know, so you could tell them apart. Monday Night Football, Chiefs, Rams. Monday at 8.15 on ESPN. Welcome back to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium here on the campus of North Carolina Central ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. North Carolina Central taking over after, wow, we, everybody who was looking thought they were going to be pinned back under the proverbial shadow of their own goal post, but teammate knocks it away from another, and they get it first and 10 at the 20 for quarterback Nail Ramadan. Ramadan with a quick... Oh, a new quarterback we have out there now, Dominique Schaffner, number 14, and Schaffner, a redshirt freshman from Apex, North Carolina, Middle Creek High School. He's appeared in four games so far this season and passed for 180 yards with a touchdown, no interceptions. That one incomplete intended for Tyler Barnes. So second down with the new quarterback in. And Schaffner on the delayed handoff. And that ball is loose. And who has it? And it was a premature whistle on that play. I think the official on this side did not see the ball pop out, so he blew the whistle. So I think... I think it was a fumble, but the official on this side didn't see the ball pop out, and he blew the whistle prematurely, so the player stopped. Well, it certainly seemed like that ball came out once he was down. This might be a better look at it. I don't know whether it's coming know. out once yeah. he hits. And uh, a t definitely recovered the fumble, but doesn't matter now. They ruled him down, third down. Schaffner going deep, has a man, but overshot him. His intended receiver was Nike Martin, and he had had three or four steps against the defender. And if that's on target, that's a touchdown, and Central's right back in this one. And this is where I think a t is vulnerable on the outside. When they get time to throw the ball down the field, I think they have an advantage with their receivers against the defensive backs from a t They've just got to give their quarterbacks time. They gave Schaffner a little bit of time. I think he just put a little bit too much on the football, but he had his receiver streaking down the field. Zachary Leslie back deep to receive this rugby-style kick that hit. A central defender at about the 42. I don't know if the officials picked it up there. Yes, one did. It's going to be a touch right there, an illegal touch right at the 43-yard line. 35-yard punt, no return, and a &T takes over again in great field position. And Coach Sam Washington wants his offense to try to take advantage and get some more points here. You can never have enough against your in-state rival. Well, what I would like to see from Coach Eastman and his coaching staff is to bring more pressure. Bring that blitz package. Bring some of those linebackers downhill. Don't allow Raynard to sit back there comfortably. We know he's coming back off of concussion protocol, so he's going to be getting rid of the football probably a little bit quicker than he usually does. You got to bring pressure. Hart right. Jumping through a hole off the right side. Brought down by Foster. Picked up three. It'll be second and seven. Now that's a good play for the defense. You didn't give up a whole lot of yards. Now you've got to be stopped at the point of attack. And you've got to bring pressure. You want to put them in a more likely passing down so you'll know that you can bring pressure because the quarterback's going to keep the ball and try and go down the field. Here he is again. Cartwright breaks tackles. Cartwright across the 45, down to the 43-yard line before Deontay Fair stopped what could have been a much bigger run. Now, that can happen. You've got everybody close to the line of scrimmage. You're playing cover one, one deep safety. That means you've got to make the play at the first and second level because if you don't, there's nobody else there. You see Cartwright get to the second level. There's nobody there because the linebackers are so close to the line of scrimmage. A good job by Fair to make that tackle because if he doesn't, that's it. He's going for the touchdown. 
So I'm score on a 35 yard touchdown run similar play. In the first quarter. And now on first down quick pitch Cartwright has some room. On the far side bounces off a tackle there and gets inside the 35 yard line. Well this guy is hard to bring down for one guy. Well what I like about him is he's not trying to go out of bounds. He's looking for someone to hit. He is making the contact as the ball carrier as to as opposed to receiving the contact. He's bringing the contact to the defenders. Another impressive pickup on first down by Cartwright. Of course came in needing that 108 yards to go over a thousand for the season and he's well on his way so far in this one here in the second quarter. Now the quick pass over the middle and the receiver is open on the quick slant play and he hits his wide receiver Quinzel Lockhart. And that play was a derivative of the play right before it. They fake the pitch out. You see him with the fake right there and then he goes down the scene to his tight end. Now you've got the defense guessing. That is what they want to do offensively. Make the defense guess. Lockhart picks up 15 on that play. Impressive march here by the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Raynard on another slant. That one jumped and knocked away. Nice defensive play that time by Demario Evans. Knocking that one away from the intended receiver. Zachary Leslie. It'll be second and ten. Now for Central, can there be a bend but don't break defense right here? Utilizing that trips formation a lot so far in this game. Trips near side left. Give and the delay to Jamaine Martin. And Martin will pick up a couple. So it'll be third and long. Picked up two. And so far, the AT backs, Martin Cartwright, have been fall forward backs. Even when they're stopped at the point of attack, they're seeming to fall forward and get a yard or two. They're doing a good job of not having negative rushing plays. NT State one for three so far in the game on third down. This is a third and eight. Raynard pulls it down. Going to keep it. And Raynard gets down to the 15 where he'll be about four yards shy of a first down. And he got to be a collective gasp on that sideline when a guy coming off for concussion protocol carries the football downfield at all. But he got up, he's fine, and they're going to attempt a field goal here, which will be from 32 yards. This will be Noel Ruiz. Ruiz, one of two so far this season from this distance. He'll be kicking this from the left hash. It is up, has plenty of distance, and it is good. Noel Ruiz. Converts that one from 32 yards, and North Carolina A&T capitalizes after the impressive march. The Aggies up by 17. Chicken farming is a tough business. I don't know how Vaughn does it. Back here at Durham, North Carolina, an impressive eight-play, 42-yard march, taking three minutes, 50 seconds for North Carolina A&T State. Ruiz's 32-yard field goal makes it a 17 to nothing game. Let's take a look at both marching bands, the North Carolina Central Sound Machine and the Blue and Gold Marching Machine of A&T State. Ruiz going to kick this one off and back deep to receive will be Mason Powell and also on the receiving team Chance Kennedy and did he did he have a fair catch signal I believe he did Powell he fair caught it at the 13 yard line so it'll come out to the 25 
where they'll take over first and 10. That's a smart play. Or, well, it looks yeah. like a and T doesn't quite know that. They're, they're lining up back at about the 13. But I believe the rule says that one with a fair catch on the kickoff comes up to the 25. So he improves field position by 12 yards. Very, very smart play by Mason Powell back on the kick return team. And Schaffner in there at quarterback again, number 14. And Schaffner on the quarterback keeper called his own number that time. It spins out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. So a good game on the quarterback keeper on first down. And those are the type of plays you're going to get some aggressive defense. You go right at them. As they're coming up the field, you're going down the field. You're going to get positive yards. Now, if you get a couple of those types of plays going, you make this a defense start to do a little more read and react defense. And that running play will go nowhere. The backup running back, take, uh, Ty Taekwon Watson, and a little extracurricular stuff going on between a couple of uh, players. One of them is Antoine Wilder from the ANT defense. But Watson was thrown for a loss. On that play, Julian McKnight, big number 95, one of the first to hit him on the play. So it'll set up a third down and nine for North Carolina Central. Schaffner coming near side and overthrew his intended target as he was looking for Tyler Barnes. And so a three and out in North Carolina Central going to be forced to punt, trailing 17, and the frustration mounts in this big rivalry game for the home team. Well, they got positive yards on the first play, about four and a half yards. You put yourselves where you want to be on second down, where you can either throw the football or run the football. I think the choice of running the football allowed for this a t defense to react and get a tackle in the backfield and put them behind the sticks again. And that ball never more than about five and a half feet off the surface of the field, but it gets a great bounce. And 51 yard punt. And running game also, of course, has been very strong for Ansi State. Well, Kurt Wright, they can't bring him down, and he runs over defenders when they step in the way. You've got to run downhill and tackle this young man. He's not going to lay down. He is a tough, hard nosed downhill runner. He doesn't sit back and dance. He hits the hole and he goes. Hard right now. Twenty-three yards short of that one thousand yard mark. And here's Cartwright coming off the near side and picks up about three on first down. And right now there's a distinct advantage for the offensive line for A&T because you've got a tired defense. You've got an offense for Central that's doing a lot of three and outs. You know, they've got four three and outs, two five play drives. That's not going to get it. You've got a defense that is extremely tired. And you've got an offensive line that outweighs their defensive line by 52 pounds. So when you start to lean on those guys and lean, 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 they start to get tired and you're starting to see the attrition take effect. Reynard calling his own number, has plenty of room. Reynard up across midfield and inside the 45, he'll be marked down at the 42. What a run by the quarterback coming off the custom protocol. It doesn't seem to matter right now. And you've got tired defensive linemen. You don't see a whole lot of pursuit. You've got linebackers in pursuit, but that's it. You've got tired defensive linemen. A good job by Raynard to recognize there was a seam to run the football, and a good job of getting down and not taking any unnecessary contact from that defense. 32 yards. It looked like he ran about 20 to him before anybody realized he kept the football. Nice run on first down that time by Lamar Reynard. Now he's going to call his number again inside the 40. And Reynard dives down inside the 30. They'll move the sticks once again. Will North Carolina A&T State? And all this does is demoralize the defense because you've got the running back, Cartwright, running over you. Now you've got the quarterback running by you. 
So, you know, right now the defense has to react to the quarterback and the running back. The defensive backs have got to do a better job, a good job on the outside because they're going to have to bring more players inside the box to stop that run, keep some linebackers home now, and you'll get man coverage on the outside. Raynard has called his own number the last two plays to the tune of about 34 yards on those two carries. Raynard again now passing. Bell has it on the near side, and Bell will go down just inside the 25. Raynard pass complete. Bell brought down by King Kiaku on the near side, and he has been a favorite target of Lamar Reynard, not only last season, but especially in this game with the underneath short type stuff, and hopefully some yardage on the run after catch. And right now, AT is able to do exactly what they want to do. Central needs a big play on their defense. Quick pop and caught at the 20 yard line will be close. And you know, a little extracurricular activity and flags fly everywhere. As Jaquel Taylor, a little bit too overzealous in making that throw down. And while you're throwing your hands up, you know you can't do that. The whistle was blown. You picked the guy up. And you not only pick him up, you pop. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense, number 27. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Malik Wilson, the one who made the catch and took that throw down. And Taylor's a senior. You expect more from your seniors right here. Stop right there. You can't slam him down. And I understand you're frustrated. You've been out on the field the majority of the first half, but you still can't give up 15 free yards. First down and goal, and this is Jermaine Martin and Martin. Will go in for the touchdown. Got lost to a few bodies over there on the far side of the field. And we have an injured North Carolina Central player down just inside the 10 yard line on the far side of the field. And watch number 49, William Simpson, on the lead block right here. That's all you've got to do. You don't have to get a knockout punch. Just get in front of the guy and give your running back a lane. He went in basically untouched. It appears to be Mike Robinson, the cornerback, six foot, 180 pound, five year senior out of Spencer, North Carolina. And they attend to be, or they look to be attending to the right lower leg. And let's hope he's going to be okay. Helped up. Not able to hold, or to, able to put a whole lot of pressure on that right leg. One more look. And you see him right here at the top of your screen. He's gone. Looks like his foot just got caught in the turf. And he's able to run off. He's got a little bit of hitch in his giddy, but he's able to get off the field. And he doesn't need help, so that's a good sign. Might have been stepped on a little bit, too, by big number 78, Micah Shaw, over there, who was blocking him. Here's the extra point, and it is good by Noel Ruiz and we have flags down and some more ex extracurricular stuff and you know some trash may be being talked and I say that very loosely <laughs> down there on the field against these guys who many of whom grew up together played with and against each other and yep. again it's a whole winter worth of bragging rights but if you're central right now you don't need to be doing any talking <laughs> you need to be running over to the sideline trying to get some type of game plan to get something going Six play, 76 yard march, took three minutes, 11 seconds. And Jamaine Martin on the 10 yard run. And a key play, uh, Reynard, a couple quarterback keepers, good for 32 and 12 yards, respectively. And North Carolina AT. Yes, the point is good. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 73, kicking team. 15 yards will be added to the kickoff. That's Marcus Pettiford. And it's 24 nothing. The Aggies of ANT State in total control. We'll be back. The College Football Playoff Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesday at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Capital One. 
Welcome back. A&T State, 24-0. Of course, ESPN College Football presented to you by McDonald. All A&T State all the time so far in this one here in the first half. And that other big game, remember, it continues on this path. A&T State wins, and Florida A&M loses. They're trailing Bethune-Cookman right now 7-3 in the second. That game now on ESPN Classic with our good friends Tiffany Green, Jay Walk over there in Orlando for the Florida Classic. Of course, A&T gets the outright MEAC championship and a berth in their second straight celebration bowl. Short kickoff with that penalty coming down at the 20. And here's Mason Powell, and Powell will give Central really good field position. They need something, nothing on the ground, nothing really this whole game. They've had six drives, 20 plays, and 22 total yards, thanks in part to this tough ANC State defense. Well, the ANC defense is getting up the field. They're making tackles in the backfield. They're disrupting everything that Central is trying to do. Sometimes they're back there with the quarterback as he's trying to hand the ball off to the running back. So the offensive line for Central has to do a better job of being stout at the point of attack and getting the initial contact, not allowing the contact to be brought to them by the defenders. Dominique Schaffner still in there at quarterback. You saw the tremendous disparity in offensive yardage and Schaffner on the quarterback draw that time might have picked up a yard and it'll be second and long and the big fellow Nick Leverett number 51 came around on the pool you got to do some work when you're pulling up in there big fella you can't go up in there and get a no hitter second and nine Schaffner under some pressure throws over the middle and it is incomplete, knocked away by a couple of defenders there. Amir McNeil, one of them, along with Keon Richardson, or Keon Rick. I don't know if you like me saying his whole first name. His teammates call him Keon. Nike Martin, the intended receiver on that play. So it's third and long on third down. They are 0 for 6 so far this afternoon. So not much for the home crowd to cheer about here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. Under some heavy pressure, throws over the middle and fighting up close to first down yardage. Looks like where the official is standing will be, wow, too close for me to call from up here. I think they're going to move the sticks. They are moving the sticks. First down, good second effort. And what I like about what Totten did on that play, he didn't turn around and look. He turned around going north and south. Watch after he catches the football. He gets it and he's going. He's turning quickly and he's trying to get to those sticks. He's not looking what else is going on. Another keeper, Schaffner, fighting a bunch of white shirts. And he might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard, depending on the spot. I think you try to get Totten the ball out of the flat. You've got to find ways to get Totten the football. I think you haven't used your bell cow as much as you should have in the first half of this ball game. He needs to be around the football. He needs to have the ball in his hands to make plays for this offense. And this A&T rush defense ranking third in all of FCS, allowing only 82 per game. Here's a little pass over the middle. And it's caught. Nice run after catch. That time for some good yardage by E.J. Hicks, who gets it inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. It will be eight yards on that play. It will be third and one. And a good job by Hicks to split those defenders and get an extra three yards. Force down 24. Almost forced to be more of a passing team in certain situations to try to get back in the ball game quickly. Not necessarily Central's forte. A little delay play on third and one, and I think they're going to be short. Uh, the first down, they might actually lost a half yard or so on the delay play. And the quickness of Daryl Johnson on the outside to beat the offensive lineman with an inside move and make that tackle. Now they're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down now and two. Inside of two minutes here in the first half. 
On the quarterback keeper, Schumpner makes a nice move and still fighting for extra yardage as he gets first down yardage down to the 36-yard line. Nice effort by the redshirt freshman quarterback he picked up two. And great penetration by number 94, Justin Cates. You see him upset with himself because he had an opportunity to make a play in the backfield, but a good job by Schaffner to break that arm tackle and fall forward and get that first down. Sometimes you've got to give up your body for your ball club, and Schaffner did it on Schaffner did it on that play to get the first down. Schaffner under some heavy pressure throws to the far side, but threw that one out of bounds as he was looking for his intended target, Tyler Barnes, on the near sideline, who was covered well by Amir McNeil on the near side. And I think Central can run the football. They've got all three of their timeouts, so they don't have to worry about time going off the clock if you run the football. You've got to keep this defense off balance. You can't be predictable with your offensive play calling. Watson and Totten now in in the backfield and under pressure and down he's going to go. Now they finally blow the whistle and that man number 40, Daryl Johnson, picks up sack number 10 and a half on the year. He is a beast coming off that defensive end spot, a loss of seven. And that's not fair. You've got a true freshman, Ricky Lee, on the outside. He opened up that outside shoulder, gave up a short corner to Daryl Johnston, and that allowed him to get that sack. Bad. Try this new Robitussin honey. The real honey you love, plus the powerful cough relief you need. Mind if I root through your trash? New Robitussin honey, because it's never just a cough. We are back third and very long for Central, trying to get back into this game, trailing by 24. 111 to go here in the first half. The Aggie Eagle Classic has been all Aggie so far. Chopter in some trouble. That one hit as he threw it. And it is incomplete, falling harmlessly on the far sideline. So they will be forced to punt this one away. And great pressure by that man again, number 40, Daryl Johnson. Well, you've got to give your true freshman help on the outside. Ricky Lee is going out to try and get to him, and he gets him on an inside move because he overset to the outside. When you're playing against a speed rusher, you tend to overset at times because you're thinking, I gotta get out there, I gotta get out there. But when you've got a skilled speed rusher like Daryl Johnson, he can make an inside move, so you have to be able to power step with that inside foot and get hands on him. You're not able to power step, you're gonna give him a free reign to the quarterback. Got a stoppage on the field here. Not sure if either team has taken an official timeout. It has not been indicated, at least not what we saw. All right, coming up at the half, Kelly Ogeron's inspiring story, Clemson's giant backfield, and of course, first half highlights. It's been all North Carolina A&T State so far, 24-0. They still have a minute and five to go. And remember, folks, they defer on the opening kickoff, so the Aggies will receive the kickoff to start the second half. So things going the way of Sam Washington and his ball club right now. Rugby-style kick rolling down inside the 10-yard line, and it'll be down at about the two, so a nice job on that punt that time by John Picaro. And we'll see after the 35-yard punt down at the two what they're going to do here. Run it out one more time. That's the nice roll. And his teammate did knock it away from him. <laughs> So you a gambler here, coach, or are you going to look to see what the matchups are and maybe try to take a deep strike down for you, or are you going to If they don't have run a deep safety, out? I'm going down the field and see what my guy can do. Okay. Reynard under center for, I believe, the first time in the game, and he's going to go on the keeper to try to give himself some more Reynard room. On the quarterback keeper. And see, right now, you've got a central ball club that doesn't look like they're expecting them to pass the football. They've got their safety up to the, close to the line of scrimmage. You've got man coverage on the outside. I go with the double move. And they're, they're going kind of a no huddle here, so it looks like they might 
trying to look at what the defense has given them here. And don't be shocked if they try to go for it all here with a deep ball one on one in that matchup outside. Reynard keeps it again on the sneak. And Reynard gets up across the five. But then again, when you're up 24 points and you get the ball in the second half, you might as well just run it on out. Let the clock run out and get ready for the second half. And that will do it. They will not run another play here in the first half. Lamar Reynard and company very comfortably in front. North Carolina A&T's defense has been all over the central offense, and the uh, Aggies' offense hasn't been too bad either. North Carolina A&T State up 24 to nothing as halftime festivities about to begin here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. The two bands will go head-to-head, -head, blue and gold marching machine of A&T and the sound machine of North Carolina Central in the typical halftime band battle. And we'll keep you up to date from the studio with all the latest scores, highlights, and stories. 24-0, a t leading at the half. Black Friday sale on now. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football presented by McDonald's. We're in Durham, North Carolina at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium where North Carolina A&T State needing a victory today to have a good shot at postseason stuff is all over North Carolina Central. Along with Forrest Connolly, Eric Clemens back here with you up in the broadcast booth. And what more can you say? The A&T defense came in, highly ranked, ranked third in all of FCS. Allowing only 82 yards rushing a game, and Central has been able to do nothing. Well, for a and it almost looks as if they're saying, okay, we know if we win this game, we'll put ourselves in the position for the Celebration Bowl, but also for FCS playoffs. But let's make a statement just in case someone has a question about whether or not we should get to the FCS playoffs. And you talk about a and State, you talk about defense, not many cracks in it all first half long against these stout guys, especially the front seven. Well, they're getting up the field. They're not allowing Central to go down the field. There's no time for the quarterback. We've seen two quarterbacks for Central this afternoon, and nobody's been able to get anything going. And then on the opposite side of the field, they have been running the ball so effectively with Cartwright. 88 yards on nine carries, almost 10 yards a carry. He's running over defenders. He's running through the defense. He's running away from the defense. You see here, just running over a defender. And he shows the speed. And once he gets to the outside, nobody's catching him. He gets all the way to the end zone untouched. And right, Lamar Reynard coming back off a concussion and had him sit out last week and take a look at those stats, the rush yards. Well, they're doing way better than they normally do. Again, they come in, the defense of North Carolina A&T State, holding opponents to just 82 a game. North Carolina Central minus seven with a running back like Isaiah Totten. That's pretty incredible stuff if you were the A&T defense. Well, they're trying to have that 82 a game go down to about 60 <laughs> that we right. did doing this afternoon. A great job so far by this defense from A&T. Malik Wilson is back deep to receive the opening kickoff here in the second half. Again, A&T deferred that opening kickoff. So they could be in this position in the second half and try very hard to add to a 24-point lead. And, of course, we'll keep you up to date on that Florida Classic score. High kickoff comes down to Wilson, who drops it. And now we'll pick it up. And now we'll find some room on the far side before he's driven hard out of bounds as he crossed the 20-yard line. So... That's a nice tackle. Textbook tackle. He did not launch himself. He didn't launch. He kept his head up. He used his shoulder. And he dipped and lifted. Exactly how you teach him. Daryl Smith making the textbook tackle. All you youngsters watching, that's the way at least they tell you how to do it. I was too chicken. I didn't want to stick my head in anyway. <laughs> that's why I played offensive line. Okay, okay, gotcha. Not that I was afraid. No, 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 no. And nobody was going to tell you it were anyway. <laughs> Here's the pitch. And Cartwright on first down. Runs into several black shirts over there. Yeah, a lot of chippiness going on between these two schools. Well, well you got to expect that, especially with it being a rivalry game. 
with one team not doing very well so far. I thought Central did a good job defensively on that play to stretch it out, not allow Cartwright to get north and south. That's what you need to do with Cartwright. You don't want to allow him to plant that foot and get north and south. When you stretch it out, you allow pursuit to get there, something that I think they do a very good job of. Cartwright after the gain of two goes to the sideline. Jamaine Martin, number 30, replaces him. Second down, the play fake, and Martin looking deep, has a man, and it's got it. He found Ron Hunt behind the defense inside the 20-yard line for a big game. And the defensive backs got caught looking in the backfield. They went with the play-action passing game. The receiver was wide open. Two defensive backs on that side of the field. They are looking in the backfield, not paying attention, and they caught the safety walking up. Jaquel Taylor, number 27. He has to stay deep. You cannot allow an offensive player to be deeper than you are if you're the safety valve. 55 yards on that hookup from the quarterback, Lamar Raynard, that equals his long completion of the year at 55. Off the play fake, quick slant. Bell gets inside the five down to about the two-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle made that time by Jamarcus Johnson. And look at AT after that pickup of 18, two plays. They're knocking at the door again. And you see Bell use his big body. First of all, play action once again. They're getting man coverage on the outside. And a good job by Raynard to lead his receiver. Too often you see college quarterbacks throwing to open receivers and not throwing receivers open. He threw Bell open on that play. First down and goal to go. Fullback William Hollingsworth listed as a tight end, but a fullback in there in front of Mark Cartwright right now. And here's Cartwright off the left side, fighting. Did he get in the end zone? He stuck the ball in there. Touchdown. And North Carolina AT State adds to its lead. It's now 30 to nothing after that impressive three play march. And that's just leg drive and power by Cartwright. He was not going to be denied. You see him get the football. He gets hit at the point of attack, but he keeps those legs churning. He keeps driving. And once again, he falls forward. I've yet to see him fall backwards this afternoon. Correction, four-play march. Uh, nonetheless, quite impressive. Ruiz coming on for the extra point. And that is good. And 31-0. The Aggies of North Carolina A&T State in control early in the third. Agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Markwell, Cartwright and company, 31-0. A&T, a four-play, 76-yard March to open the second half takes only two minutes, 15 seconds. Of course, the big 55-yard catch and run, a key play on that drive. And a &T State, we talked about it earlier, Forrest, that they wanted to make a statement in this game, not just win and assure themselves at least a part of a championship in the MEAC, but make a statement as they head into the postseason. Well, the thing for A&T is they realize they can only worry about what they can control, and that's this ball game. You can't worry about what's going on in the Florida a and Bethune-Cookman ball game. We know if Florida a and wins, they're going to the Celebration Bowl. For A&T, they have two opportunities, not only to possibly secure a Celebration Bowl bid with a Florida a and loss and a win here, but also an FCS bid. And they were looking at an at-large bid, so you want to place yourself in the best position as one of the higher-rated at-large teams. And uh, again, they win any tie-break scenario that doesn't involve FAMU. So if somehow FAMU should lose today, and they wind up in a three-way tie involving Bethune Cookman, or even potentially a four-way tie involving South Carolina State, if all those teams finish five and two, A and T State gets the celebration bowl for by virtue of tiebreakers. And those two big victories, one over an FBS school and one over FCS powerhouse, Jacksonville State. That's a nice first down pass completion. And uh, Nail Ramadan is back in the game at quarterback. And right now, for Central and their coaching staff, 
you're going to see the character of your ball club right now. You're behind big. It doesn't look like you're going to win this ball game unless something dramatically happens throughout the rest of this second half. But you want to see the character of your team. You're always building for the next ball game, for the next season. So you want to see how your guys react. You don't want to see any chippiness. You know, you understand that your guys are going to be frustrated, but you don't want to play dirty. You want to continue to play the game the right way and see what guys continue to give maximum effort. Of course, Coach Granville Eastman, the interim head coach, moving up, was under Coach Gary Mack, who left here to become the offensive coordinator at Rice. And this would have been a big feather in his cap had they had a great performance against a highly touted not only conference uh, opponent, but FCS power in North Carolina A&T. Nothing going too well for Coach Eastman and his squad right now, but how they finish here might go a long way in his consideration for removing that interim tag and getting this program under his direction for years to come. On third and ten, Ramadan, quick swing. A penalty flag is down, and they get, I believe, Justin Cates on a late hit on the quarterback. Cates doesn't agree with the call. But I think that'll be the preliminary indication. Personal foul, rough at the passer. Defense, number 94, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Casey Soistman, our referee. Day and. and to the fan base, they may not think it's that important because they're up 31 to nothing. But if this is a close ball game, if this is a playoff game, now I don't know about that. I, it's football. He pushed him down. He didn't go and hit him. He just pushed him up lightly. So <laughs> I'm not questioning the officials, you know, decision making, but that right there might have been one of those, hey, we're just going to give you another shot to try and drive the ball down the field. Little delay play that time off the left side picks up two and I understand you want to protect the quarterback but this is for Isaiah Totten on that carry he's been pretty much shut down as has this entire offense by the North Carolina ANT defense again at the top or near the top of this conference in just about every category and uh, near the top of all of FCS ranked number three allowing just 82 yards rushing for their opponents per contest and a quick pass to the outside as he was looking for Nike Martin on the far side that time, a little short, incomplete. And that's due to the pressure that Ramadan has seen all afternoon. He has not had many plays where he can set his feet and look down the field, and that's a reaction to the pressure. And we talked to Coach Eastman and other coaches here, and there wasn't one individual on the ANT defense that concerned them. They were concerned about everybody, especially in that front seven, putting big pressure on their quarterback, like we see right there, and down he goes. Big sack on third down and eight. And they're going to take him off the field. Sam Blue again coming through virtually untouched. Well, they did a tackle and twist. Sam Blue came around from the end position. Up the middle of that offensive line, nobody touched him. Watch him loop around. He takes a step up the field, then he comes under. Nobody touches him. The offensive guard has to react. Jalen Barrington, number 72. You've got to keep a wide base. You've got to be able to react. When you see that three technique, go to the outside. You've got to know someone else is looping around. Zachary Leslie standing back in his 20. This one will be another nice roll. And it'll roll dead. Close to the three-yard line. So another excellent job with that rugby-style kick by John Picaro. 49 yards, no return. North Carolina Ante State in Cheap Black Friday sales event. We are back in Durham, North Carolina. Let's take a look at today's Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's. Here's Coach Sam Washington. His team wanted to make a statement. Have they ever? Eight drives, four touchdowns, a field goal, two punts, and they ended the half with two quarterback sneaks up the middle in the shadow of their own goal posts. And now they just give up the middle and stacked up after a very short gain. 
That time is Markwell Cartwright. Now, there are a couple of things that can be dangerous for both ball clubs. When you're this deep uh, in your own territory, for a and you don't want to get a holding call by an offensive lineman in the end zone because that's a safety. But also, for Central, you've got to be careful because when everybody's up in the box, if the back gets to the third level, there's no defender there. So they've got to be stout at the point of attack. They cannot allow the back to break open free because there's no deep safety. Re wide receiver set this time. Raynard and off the quick play fake, he goes to Bell near side and Bell showing that strength. Struggles along the near side. Demario Evans finally pushed him out of bounds up at the 14 yard line. And that's going to be first down yardage and that is all too easy. That 11 yard pick up for Elijah Bell. And I'm surprised at the soft coverage on the outside because you have to know that A&T is going to go with the quick passing game because they were so deep in their own territory and you don't want to possibly get a holding penalty. So I'm surprised at the soft coverage. Here's Cartwright bursting through a hole. Good reaction by the defense. He closed it pretty quickly after a pickup of about four. And there's no deep safety. Once again, now you have to be careful. If you're central, you want to make sure you keep everything in front of you. I look for Deontay Fair to drop at the snap of the football. If he stays up in that box, Raynard may try to go down the field again. The blitz along the far side, a quick underneath bubble screen, and a lot of room that time for Zachary Leslie and a possible touchdown saving tackle that time by Deontay Fair. And number 62, Malik Johnson, number 68, Marquel Hardy. They are angry because they're out there, they're ready to make the block, but the back went inside. They wanted him to cut back to the outside. You saw him looking, and the big fellas are saying, Hey, I got out here in front of you, let me make a block, let me make a play. <laughs> You're a little bit too passionate about that, man. You used to hey, play O-line? Hey, man, when we get up the field, we want somebody to run behind us. It's a lot for us to go past five yards. 15 yards on that catch and run by Zachary Leslie. Another first down. NT State just in cruise control. Raynard off the play fake, going deep, far side, back shoulder, and a catch. Elijah Bell. Nice adjustment to come down with the football. And that's one of those you got mossed. A great job by Bill adjusting, high playing the football, squeezing the football all the way down to the ground, not allowing the defender to pull it out. 27 yards on that pickup. And once again, AT in a relaxed state of mind on both sides of the football, looking quite impressive so far. In this second half, marching it smartly right down the field. First and 10 inside the 40. Raynard will call his own number. And Raynard goes down at the 35. Pick up a four. And I'm sure Coach Washington and his staff get nervous every time Raynard runs the football. We know he's coming out of that concussion protocol. You don't want your quarterback to take any unnecessary hits, especially when you're up 31 to nothing in a ball game that you look like you're going to win running away when you've got ball games ahead of you. Here's Cartwright on the delay and gets inside the 35 down to the 33. I wanted to ask you, as a former player who's probably dealt with some injuries, do you get to the point where you think about that when you take the field again? Or are, 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 you, are you trying not to favor it? Are you trying to look like you've never been injured? Are you thinking about it at all? You can't. Because if you think about it, you're going to get injured again because you're trying to overcompensate and protect that part of your body. So you've got to either go out wholeheartedly and play or not play because it's a detriment to your ball club if you're not healthy out there and you're just trying to play and be selfish. Reynard calls his own number, has some room near side, inside the 30. He'll go out of bounds inside the 25 and move the chains once again as the Aggies are an offensive juggernaut as well as on defense. 
10 yards on that quarterback keeper for the senior, the fifth year senior, Lamar Reynard. Reynard and Marquell Cartwright been playing football with or against one another since they were nine. I'm sure that duo glad to be reunited in the backfield today with Reynard coming off that concussion protocol. Reynard off the play fake, going deep, looking for Bell, got it! Touchdown! And you talk about a demoralizing drive. This started inside their own five-yard line, and I don't think they had a negative play on that drive. Every play almost seemed like it was a first down or putting him in a position to get a first down the following play. You see here, Renard has all day long to deliver the ball down the field. And once again, Elijah Bell is able to get separation from the defensive back. Easy pitch and catch the ball falls right in the bread basket. 24 yards on that touchdown hookup. And Ruiz's extra point is true and through. And now we have a 38-0 ball game. It might be time for Coach Washington to maybe rest some of those starters. We'll be back. Top 25 ranking show, Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. We are back in plenty of smiles on that North Carolina A&T State sideline. That's Elijah Bell, who was the recipient of a 24-yard touchdown Catch off the right arm of Lamar Reynard. Nine play, 96-yard drive, took over five minutes. Bell also had a notable 27-yard catch on the drive. And North Carolina A&T State has been able to do everything it has wanted to do on both sides of the football in this contest. Ruiz the kickoff. Short one. Comes down and breaking through a little bit. That is Watson. Taekwon Watson on the short kickoff. Gets good field position for his team. Out to the 45, 46 yard line they're spotting it at now. And it's interesting when you look at both sidelines. You've got one sideline with a fan base that is sitting, enjoying the ball game. Nobody's moving. You've got a Another fan base that is fouling out of the stadium going to find the best tailgating they can find right now. <laughs> Not much to cheer about if you're a fan of the Eagles of North Carolina Central in this ball game. Nail Ramadan is your quarterback, and there's Watson once again. And Watson on the delay gets out close to midfield on the first down play. Watson the ball carrier. Pick up a four. Second and six from the 50-yard line. So you have to wonder, even with a backup quarterback, again, Chauncey Caldwell hurt a foot a couple weeks ago. A dynamic sophomore quarterback who can run and throw it. And, oh, what a hit that time is coming in there with Julian McKnight to lay some leather on Watson. And what shouldn't be understated is Caldwell's production. 176 total yards of ball game, 324 rushing, 916 passing total. But when you look at what he brought to this ball club, that really hurt this offense because it took away some of their versatility as far as his ability to throw and run the football effectively. You have to respect his ability to throw and run the football. And uh, Nail Ramadan took a hard hit, cleaning up that time. Deion Jones was in there, as was Artavius Richardson for no gain. And a quick three and out. And I don't know if you if you coach Eastman, you, you're not wanting to get this thing out of hand, but I don't know why you're not going for it in midfield. I uh, go for it because of, something going. Well, for the fans out here, you want to give them something to cheer about, and you want to give your guys something to feel good about. So you want to try and get a score on the board. Uh, you don't look like you're going to win this ball game, but you don't want to get shut out as well. You know, you talk about the rivalry and what it means to the fan base and the teams. You don't want to get shut out. Elijah Bell with that fair catch at the 15-yard line. And, of course, they'll be monitoring the A&T players and fans. What's going on down in the Florida Classic in Orlando? And Bethune-Cookman has a one-point lead. That game 
in the third quarter. You can check that one out on ESPN Classic. But why would you want to leave us? Why would you want to leave us? <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. You know, flip back and forth. Well, you know, flip back and forth. But again, if a t holds on to this 38-point lead and that score down in Orlando stays the same, a t wins the outright MEAC championship and gets a berth in the celebration ball. Side, making sure he's staying in bound as well is Markwell Cartwright. And I'm sure some people may know that he's a few yards short of that thousand yard mark, trying to do that for the second year in a row. And we have an injured offensive lineman down on the uh, near side. It's Mark Hill. Yard line. Mark Hill Hardy, I think it is, is yes. hurt. 68. It looks like it may be a cramp the way he, he locked his leg out. And probably because all of the time they've spent on the field <laughs> running offensive plays. He's walking off pretty much under his own power. And did, did I see a, a North Carolina Central guy kind of <laughs> talking trash to him as he went <laughs> off the field? I didn't see that, did I? I hope I didn't see that. Anyway. Hardy goes off. on second down after no gain on first. And fighting hard for a few yards, and that is Jermaine Martin. And again, a few words being exchanged after a gang tackle against him. He picked up one. And this is a time where the officials have to be cognizant of what's going on every single play. Because you've got one team that is embarrassed at home right now. And you've got another team that is feeling really good about what they're doing and knowing that they're placing themselves in a position to play on. Third down. Raynard going to keep it. And he's going to get first down yardage and slide down at the 28-yard line as he kind of tiptoed his way through all the defenders and wound up in the open. And Raynard is very patient on this play. He finds a hole, he stops, he stutters, and he gets up the field. And I want to give kudos to number 18, Marcus Martin, because he had an opportunity to hit the quarterback, and he pulled up. So I like the sportsmanship he showed on that play because a lot of times when your team is behind, like his team is, that defensive player will take that opportunity to get a cheap shot. So that was a good job by Marcus Martin, number 18, for not taking that cheap shot. And that'll do it. That was the final play of the third quarter. 15 minutes to go in this one. North Carolina a and in control by 38. 99 per month with a two-year agreement. Get Fios, the fastest internet in the U.S. 100% fiber optic network. 100% phenomenal. Go to GetFios.com today. In case you're just joining us, all a and in this Aggie Eagle Classic. a and 200 yards rushing. North Carolina Central only minus 15. 457 total yards for the Aggies of Coach Sam Washington. Only 44 for Central. Time of possession and, of course, the score. 38 nothing as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Raynard still in there at quarterback. And gives it on the uh, handoff. Off the near side, and it looked like uh, Markwell Cartwright. It was. Cartwright came in 108 yards short of that 1,000-yard barrier. Before that carry, he had 97. So unofficially, he's at 101 yards, and the game needs seven more to get 1,000 yards for the season and do that for the second season in a row. And to tell you how productive he's been, 16 carries, only one negative play. Cartwright again, this time stacked up for no gain. As he might have gotten that one back to the line of scrimmage. Of course, the central guys know maybe what he might be after. And they're going to key on number 22 when he's back there. Albert Thune has added a field goal. And now 
They are up 17-13 over the Rattlers of Florida a &M again. a &M needs only to win, baby, and they go to the Celebration Bowl as what would appear to be co-champions of the MEAC with a &T State, but they beat a &T State head-to-head. a &T State, of course, losing both its games in just a matter of the closing seconds. Two losses and a total of six seconds on the clock when they lost them both. Now, I have to ask this question. Do you think it's personal at this point? You're up 38 nothing. Fourth and seven. You know you're going to win this ball game. Why would you be throwing the ball down the field? You run the ball. If you get the first down, you continue to run the football. But to throw the ball down the field, it's almost like you're rubbing it in a little bit at this mm. point. I would certainly have that question if I was on the uh, – central sideline but again you know you talked about earlier in terms of in, you can't let up in any way or anything but, but running 30, the ball but it's 38 running, nothing. right running the ball though isn't exactly letting up yeah. you just i mean they've run the ball very effectively right. up to this point they certainly have <laughs> so we have a timeout on the field for north carolina central and i think that leads to chippiness yes from the players because you start to feel like, okay, you guys are beating us, and now you're trying to rub it in and, and, and make it that much worse. And you've got a team over here that is, you know, a little bit embarrassed, yeah. um, you know, because it's not just a, another football game. It's not just a conference game. It's a rivalry game. Check out the Undefeated for exclusive HBCU content. Click on the HBCU tab on theundefeated.com. And as a bonus, check out Tiffany Kelly's feature on how Baltimore high school students got Morgan State basketball star Marvin Webster into the College Basketball Hall of Fame. Punning this one will be Rivers. A nice high spiraling kick aimed toward the far sideline. It'll go out of bounds. Nice job on that punt. We marked out at the 15-yard line where Central will take over. 13-28 to go in this one. All is set for the final score, AMT 38 set. Hey, what a matchup it's going to be on Monday Night Football on ESPN. Our Week 11 matchup has Patrick Mahomes, the 9-1 Chiefs, Todd Gurley, the 9-1 Rams, 8-15 Eastern, 5-15 Pacific, and, of course, Todd Gurley from Tarboro High School, not too far away from here, 90 miles east of Durham. And if you thought about it, yes, he was a stud in high school as well as he is in the pros. In fact, that's not him as a Minnesota Viking. Okay, I mean, he's got the Viking helmet on there, but that it's high school stuff. We go on the quick pass to Nike Martin, and Martin is met immediately, and you can hear those shoulder pads popping up this way as he is met hard that time to Madre Abram, one of the guys who came up to hit him after a pickup of three. Uh, we talked about earlier about, you know, going deep down the sideline. This rivalry is so intense for us that over the last four or five seasons, North Carolina Central has done a lot of disappointing and upsetting of the apple cart. That's an incomplete shovel pass at time as it's dropped on second down there. That I guess things get a little personal. Here are the last five meetings. If you look at, they're going back to 2013 A&T, won in, in similar fashion as they're winning today. But in 2014, Central knocks A&T out in terms of trying to get a MEAC championship. And uh, Morgan State goes on to the FCS playoffs. And, of course, A&T goes home. And in Greensboro, Central wins again, 21-16. And then uh, they win again in a big win at home and go to the Celebration Bowl, the Central itself. And in 2017, A&T State finally gets some revenge before the uh, – in the game that we had the fisticuffs, if you will, before it kicked off. And meanwhile, we get another three and out for Central that time. Well, I think for a &T, the fact that they're able to not only win this ball game going away, but to do it here at Central's home, uh, where there was some expectation that Central would provide a stiff test for them, and it just hasn't materialized, I think that is what's make, what, what is going to make this win that much more special. Fair catch that time by Zachary Leslie. 
and the offense will come back on the field. Now, if they throw the ball this series, <laughs> they are absolutely trying to rub it in. Yeah. You've got the ball basically at the midway point on the field. There's no reason you should throw the football. Even on a fourth down, you should be running the football at this point. You're going to try to get your running back then. 1,000-yard mark, maybe. Let's see. Is he back in, Mark? Well, Cartwright, yes, number 22, is out there. So I'm going to figure he's going to get the lion's share of carries from here on out to try to get that the yardage he needs. Join the likes of Tariq Cohen. And Cartwright might have done it with that one as he gets up to the 40-yard line. And that's a pickup of nine. And unofficially, anyway, that should do it. And that's one of those SSA runs, shoestring away. Because he was a shoestring away from getting a touchdown. Watch him on this play. As he gets north and south right here, if he didn't grab him right there, he's gone. Nobody's going to catch him. He might have shaken himself up a little bit. He left the game. And I think that'll do it. And, again, put him in the company of the legendary Tariq Cohen, now starring there with the Chicago Bears on the next level as one of few backs in the school's history to rush for a 1,000 yards two seasons in a row. And there's Raynard putting himself at risk a little bit on the keeper. See, now you've got to get your starter out the game. You've, you've got to start preparing for the future at this point. And it looks like Raynard is staying on the field as he's sitting at about the 36-yard line, but at least he's... It looks like he's cramping. Me, trying to, yeah, stretch himself out a little bit as they're working on the left leg. And we know his repetitions in practice this week have not been plentiful because he was going through concussion protocol. All right, well... Don't get mad. Get E-Trade, kiddo. Now, Tuesday on ESPN, we'll have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 ranking at 7 p.m. Eastern. Reese and the guys will break them all down from top to bottom, have coaches' reactions, as well as a live interview with new committee chairman Rob Mullins. You can always catch it live on the ESPN app from anywhere, presented by Capital One. And Marquel Cartwright, who has it, and before that loss, he was right at 1,000 yards. <laughs> for the season, and Lamar Raynard is like, hey, uh, I don't know about you, Markwell, but, you know, my future's bright. I'm wearing the shades. I've got the baseball cap on backwards, you know. And because he lost yards, Cartwright, you know he wants to stay in the ball game. He's probably going to come back to try and get those yards again. So he lost two, so now he's at 998 for the year. He's right at 1,000 after the previous run. But again, he kind of, as you said earlier, a little hitching his giddy up in the past. This time, we do have, of course, we did not mention, but the uh, backup quarterback, Khalil Carter, is in the game, replacing Raynard. Nice completion that time on the near side to Zachary Leslie. And so now the only question is, will they bring Cartwright back on the game to try to get those two yards back? And here he comes. And here he He's comes. coming back in. <laughs> And, you know, you, he's been the workhorse for them all afternoon. And now he's going back out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a coach, you have a – it's it's a double-edged sword. You want to reward your guy for all his hard work and dedication, but you also want to protect your guy for your upcoming ball games. Kayshawn Baker, the junior's in the game. He's in motion and throw a little screen this time and a nice nifty move that time. We do have a flag down on the play. Flew in – from the back for the side judge. And threw it at about the 20-yard line. 10-yard game, but again, a penalty marker on the play. And we haven't had too many of those in this contest, which is quite refreshing. Well, the officials have let them play a little bit. And it's funny because every time the central players have something to say, the a &T players keep pointing to the scoreboard. Producer Adams said, don't Jordan jinx us, Eric. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Offense, number 78. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. Micah Shaw with the illegal block below the waist. Hey, raised his hand on that one. And Cartwright now back on the field. Well, he needs two or more.
And you see, once you get past the line of scrimmage, you cannot block below the waist. Nice little screen set up by Khalil Carter and company on that play. Carter coming in 37 of 70 passing. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. And that's a nice game. On the play by Markwell Cartwright. And that should put him back over the 1,000-yard mark once again. Now, if I'm Cartwright, this is you say, Coach, okay, I'm good. <laughs> I've done my duty. <laughs> I've done what you've asked me to do. He needed two. He picked up four. So they'll punt on fourth down with Michael Rivers. 1,002 yards for Markwell. And Nick, or Nike, <laughs> I said Nick, Nike Martin. Oh, what a nice bounce, but it still goes into the end zone. Thought that was going to maybe be saved down there in the coffin corner. But it'll be first and 10 for Central. 8.58 to go in this one. Get e trade. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. We are back here in Durham, North Carolina. 38 0, 8.58 to go in regulation as AT State has emphatically made that statement. Lamar Raynard and company just watching the rest of this one, and I don't know what happened there. <laughs> there were several guys unabated to the quarterback before we got a whistle and we have an injured A&T player down in the field or slow to get up. Looked like Sam Blue out of uh, the fifth year senior out of Raleigh. And one of the local guys for A&T and a, one of the other local guys, Pettiford, Bethay, Reams, all from Durham. First down and nothing doing on that run around the near side. Artavius Richardson was in the backfield before that one even got started. A loss of five more yards in the play. Central has been able to do absolutely nothing on the ground against the third-ranked national uh, round defense in all of FCS football. Well, they've lost the battle at the line of scrimmage. The anti-defensive line is as advertised. They came into this ball game with 42 and a half tackles for loss. If you add the linebackers in, that's 72 and a half tackles for loss. Long pass down to the near side. He was looking for his receiver, Ryan McDaniel. And incomplete. Might have even gone through his hands a little bit. If you're scoreboard watching, that FAMU score, of course, if FAMU wins, the Rattlers go to the Celebration Bowl as the MEAC champions. Right now, it is tied at 19. FAMU scored, but the extra point was blocked. They were up 19-17. The extra point was blocked and returned all the way for a two-point score. And we're 19-19. That game is now on ESPN Classic. And we've got the ESPN app, so we just watched the replay going long once again. And that one knocked away. A little contact down there, but they're letting them play right now with 8.07 to go. And so it'll be another three and out for Central. And we'll punt it away. So again, any tie-break scenario other than both teams being at 6-1, and one, FAMU and North Carolina A&T State, and North Carolina A&T State will get that bid to the Celebration Bowl and that million-dollar payday, as my friend Jay Walker always says, million dollars. <laughs> and, of course, that tremendous exposure is one of the first big bowl games of the bowl season down in Atlanta next month. This one roll gets a favorable bounce. And why the central guy caught it? The ball is now at the 49-yard line. Okay. Moments ago, AM looking to go ahead, and they do. They get the touchdown pass on a nice diving effort in the end zone, but here's the extra point. Oh, no. Somebody get back. And no, nobody gets back. 
Nobody's going to catch him after the scoop and score. Give him two points. And now 19-19. What a game. And that was like a perfect block. <laughs> and it looks like Bethune-Cookman is knocking on the door to try to break that tie. And a little rollout pass that time. And finding a tight end, we do have a flag on the play Leroy right down at midfield. Leroy Hill, the tight end. Offense, that all 11 players came to a complete stop. Five yard penalty, replay first down. Nice play on first down, gets nullified by the penalty. And we are looking at the ESPN app up here in the booth, or glancing at it. Of course, we got a game to do here. But Bethune Cookman just goes up in front. A fam you on a quarterback keeper that results in about a three yard touchdown. So pending the extra point, Bethune Cookman has roared back to take the lead. After that big special teams play blocking the extra point. And this is Zachary Leslie on the catch to the far side. They'll keep the clock running. Bethune, moment ago, second and goal, and on the quarterback keeper, too much speed, gets to the corner, and we're enjoying it on the app, you can too, ESPN app, you can watch games anywhere, anytime, and we do admit it, shameless plug, we are watching the game right up here in the booth, we peeked in on the Maryland-Ohio State game a little bit too on the app, you know. Jamain Martin, and Martin puts the shoulder down, runs over a defender, and now we got some chippiness on the field, as you talked about earlier, when the home team's getting embarrassed in this big rivalry game, but no, no yellow down on the field, no flags. I think the officials understand right now that the young men from Central are very disappointed, embarrassed at the same time. So you expect you to get a little chippy, and it's football. And behind. But I like what I see there. from some of the a &T players. Number 73, Marcus Pettiford, grabbed his guy, pulled him out of there. That's what you've got to do. You've got to realize and understand you're playing for something bigger than a fight at the end of a ball game that you're going to win. Carter, safe pass on the far sideline, finds this guy, Zachary Leslie, again. A little what they call what pitch and catch absolutely keep the chains moving keep the clock running as we approach the five and a half minute mark in regulation of one that was pretty much over from the early moments well the one thing we talked about earlier in the fourth quarter was them throwing the football now that was a third and long they threw to get the first down i expect them to go back to running the football right now you, know, you want to go ahead and let the clock run. You want to get out of here as healthy as possible and prepare for where your next destination will be. On the pitch, this is Jermaine Martin going to try to stay in bounds, and he does. No gain on that first down play. Martin, the ball carrier. So, North Carolina A&T, if things stay as they are, with Bethune Cookman winning that Florida Classic game right now, and of course A&T stayed comfortably ahead. A&T would be the outright MEAC champion and have a chance to go to its second straight celebration bowl next month in Atlanta. And that'd be a great topping on the cake, if you will, for first-year head coach Sam Washington, of course. He's a longtime defensive coordinator here under the legendary coach Rod Broadway. And his team, of course, completing a great season last year, going undefeated and defeating Grambling State in the Celebration Bowl last year down in Atlanta. And Coach Washington is an interesting coach to talk to. Mm -hmm. When we had our coaches call, he made sure to emphasize to us that they were 8-2, but they were six seconds away <laughs> from being 10 and 0. He emphasized those six seconds. He might have got a little salty when I mentioned he, that uh, they lost a couple of uh, <laughs> games in the last second. Uh, he absolutely did. That's why I got a little bit quiet. His coach acted like he wanted to line up and, and, and do the Oklahoma drill. <laughs> and right. he brought that to his attention. But I love the passion. And you see that reflected on his defense. 
And here's a quarterback draw play by Khalil Carter. Carter, the ball carrier. And uh, we're six seconds away from being undefeated. I don't know how many people realize that. Certainly, he thought this announcer didn't. But one of those losses, they were unbeaten, coming off big victories, going against a winless Morgan State team at home. And they lose that one on a field goal. But it should be noted, there was a lot more aggression when he made that statement. <laughs> yeah, a lot more aggression. <laughs> but we gave each other a big hug down on the field earlier today when I met him. And, and uh, he seemed genuinely happy to see me. And that was nice. I wished him well in his endeavors and on the nice duck under move. Look at Khalil Carter get down inside the five yard line. He is knocking on the door and gives everybody the first down signal. Khalil Carter, the quarterback. You see him fake the throw. He breaks the tackle. He gets up the field and cuts back. Something you don't often see quarterbacks able to do. It runs through would be time to get three more yards to get the ball down to the one yard line. Carter, a 5'10, 230 pound senior. It's like a spark plug. Looked like he might be a little fullback in there, but he is a quarterback. He can sling it down the field. And now, first and goal as we approach the two minute mark here in regulation. There's the give and the easy touchdown going into the end zone was Kashan Baker. 5-6 running back out of Farmville, North Carolina. And Baker adds more insult to the injury. It's now 44-0 A&T State. You see the push by the offensive line. They cleared everything down. The guards are able to get up to the second level. And a pretty easy touchdown for Baker. And the extra point is good. 2.22 to go. A&T stayed up 45-0 and scoreboard watching that Florida Classic. Realize <laughs> you're raising her right. No one out pizzas the hut. Think Sam Washington is happy with the performance of his team. He has been straight clowning on the sidelines, having a great time as his team is postseason bound it's just a matter of where they will go in the postseason will they wind up in atlanta again for the celebration bowl or will they go to the fcs playoffs of course fam you and bethune cookman playing a big role in determining that the touchdown drive eight plays 51 yards five and a half minutes the kickoff coming down getting out across the 30-yard line on the return to the 34. it's all Good field position for Central as they try to get something to build on. And yeah, now they're officially spotted at the 30 30 yard line. Sports Center tonight after Arizona Washington State on ESPN with Zubin and John Anderson. Does John ever take a day off? Every time I look at that late Sports Center, it's always, I, I don't know. They'll break down how today's games will affect the college football playoff ranking, plus LeBron's reaction to the Lakers' recent surge and an inside look at the Warriors' offense without steps. Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. And I think I'll get that bonus for talking up the app for this game. They have been using it. I'm going to interrupt you. It's interesting. When you talk about playing the perfect game defensively, for Coach Washington and his ball club, I don't think you can ask for anything up to this point more perfect. Before that play, Central hit on 45 plays for a total of 42 yards, zero points scored, and only five first downs. So if you tell a coach, hey, this is what your defense wants to give you, there's not a coach in the NCAA that would wholeheartedly accept that. <laughs> a little draw play, and they close that hole pretty quickly. And hold Isaiah Totten has had has not found the sledding too easy so far in this game. They throw him for a little bit of a loss. Minus 20 yards rushing as a team in this contest against the third-ranked defense in FCS. I would think that ranking might go up <laughs> based on this performance so far in this one, unless they allow a big gash somewhere within the, this final minute. And I think they're aware of that because a lot of their starters are still in the ball game. 
and they are putting everyone on notice, whether it's a Celebration Bowl opponent or an FCS playoff opponent. This is a really, really dominant defense at the point of attack. That's where it all starts with this team, this defense, at the point of attack. I think they have some coverage issues from the outside, but offensive teams don't have time to get the ball down the field because they're so good in that front seven. They are able to get up the field. They play their lanes very well. They are very multiple in what they show you defensively. They have two or three moves. There's not one signature move by every guy. They have two or three things that they do very well. And I think that is what is going to propel this ball club to be a contender, whether it be for a, a Celebration Bowl championship or for an FCS title. And this is an awfully solid football team. They got a victory over highly touted Jacksonville State and FCS to open the season. They beat FBS East Carolina. So they are capable of doing whatever they want to do. And that is it. It is all over and emphatically as getting the shower coming off the field or coming to midfield to greet the opposing coach, Granville Eastman, Coach Sam Washington, his team is at least co-champions of the MEAC and may win an outright championship if Bethune-Cookman holds on to its lead late in that contest against FAMU. And it should not be understated the sportsmanship that we see on the field right now because of what happened last year pregame. Everyone talked about that. Not enough is talked about as far as the sportsmanship that we see. Lamar Raynard coming back off concussion protocol. Very solid in his play at quarterback. And now, just as you say that for us, <laughs> we get a couple of players, one from a and State, one from North Carolina Central, Almost getting into it down on the uh, right side 25-yard line or so. Uh, of course, you don't want to see the opponent celebrate on your field like that, but this was an emphatic victory for Coach Sam Washington and the Aggies of North Carolina A&T. 45-0 your final. For Forrest Connolly, this is Eric Clemens. For all of us at ESPN, we say so long, everybody. See you again soon.